get mommy on Real bitch, I don't be with all that drama. Nah. Money, my business, I'm a bother. I'm a bother, yeah. I ain't dragging, I'm lit. Like a For clapping back, bitch, I'm clapping on the dick. On the dick. Bust, bust it. I'm a savage. I'm a savage. Bitch, throw it back like a tank, get challenged. Woo! So this video is gonna be a review about the Jeffree Star brushes, and then also I'm just gonna play with the Dozen Katie palette. I haven't really used that on camera, but it was, uh, was alright. I don't know if it was just me that was having problems with it today, but whatever. So we're gonna test the brushes out, we're gonna test that palette out, and then we're gonna see how the Jeffree Stars work. I'll give you my opinion, and then that's it. So if you're interested, just stay tuned, and thank you so much for coming back to my channel once again, and just keep on watching. I'm actually gonna open my brushes with you guys. Just as far as packaging, this is cute as hell. I don't really like pink, but it's all right. Like, this is a cute ass bag. So just opening up these lovely brushes. They'll come in a little plastic like this. This bag's just an empty bag now. So this is all the brushes right here. So there's actually seven brushes in here. Ooh, I just felt, I put my finger in there and it was soft. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna read this off the packaging because it's gonna be too much to remember. So this brush right here is the Morphe JS4 brush. I bet you this is basically the same thing as any other Morphe brush. Oh, but it feels a little bit softer. Um, the design is the big thing, so I'm glad that they went a different direction with that. This one is the Double Trouble brush, and of course the design is exactly the same as the other brush, but this one has the duo end. As far as this goes already so far, I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna go. Like, it is pretty stiff, but like I know the Anastasia one, like it's like to the point where it's stiff, but it's also soft enough for where it doesn't feel like you're just, you're trying to do your eyebrows with like a legit art brush. It feels okay, I just wanna see how it's gonna hold up when it's actually holding a powder on top, cause I do mine with powder. Um, I wanna see how it's gonna hold the powder on here while I'm dusting, I don't want it to just like basically dust off. This brush is the JS3, this one is a contour brush. So of course, again with the design, this one's actually a little bit thicker than the rest of them. And these brushes are pretty lightweight, they're not heavy. I swear, every time I record a video. Okay, next this is the JS2 brush, which is point blank precision brush. So again, the design is exactly the same. This one is super soft. I would like to dust my bake on with a brush like this because it's super soft and I just love how it's like pointed a little bit but rounded off to the side. This would actually be good for a highlight brush as well and I believe this would be good for a blush brush. So any any type of finishing powders you're gonna put on top, I suggest using this one. I wouldn't use it for a mineral powder or a pressed powder. I would honestly just say like maybe like blushes, bronzers, or highlights. This is the JS5. This one is the Crease Queen brush. Again. This one is super lightweight, very fine, very skinny. This one does look like the other Morphe one, but honestly the density isn't as thick as other Morphe crease brush, which is really weird to say, but it doesn't feel like the density of this brush is to is very comparable to its other one. Next brush we'll be seeing is the JS6, which is the Roll Blender brush. This one is very skinny as well. Very lightweight design once again. I feel like I'm gonna end up repeating myself over these brushes. This one I would say can be used as an outer corner blender brush um, if you wanna blend what you have on your crease up to your brow bone, maybe just using this one. Um, this one is very nice and small and you can get into the very outer outer corners of your eye or maybe the inner part of your eye. So I feel like this would be a good brush to use. For the very last brush, the JS1. This one is the size queen brush. This one is very pretty. It's a very larger size. This one has a lot of bristles. Super fucking soft. I am kind of curious to see if I can use this as a liquid foundation brush. I feel like you can apply a pressed powder with this brush as well. So we'll go ahead and see how this works for my liquid foundation today. And then maybe in another video, we'll see how it works for my pressed powder. I already took my beauty blenders out of the packaging, but you do get three of these. You get two minis and you also get one jumbo. And um, they all have the same design. So they're pretty much the flat top right here. So it's more of like precision end. This is just the bigger size. So just to see a comparison, because I know everyone's pretty curious at how much these expands when they're wet. This is one that's dry and this is the mini one when it's wet. I would say if you plan on using any of these for your eye, I would suggest leaving one that's just not wet. Some people don't like to use a beauty blender with their face products on it with the same one that they would actually use concealer. So you can potentially use this one as a concealer one and then this one as just a foundation sponge. And then you can keep one for if you have pressed primers or anything that needs to go on your eye or if you just wanna use it for a smaller area, maybe the nose, then I suggest just leaving one that's not wet. So let's just jump into the tutorial. So first off, let's go ahead and pin your hair back if you're wearing a wig, if you're wearing your rear hair, you got your rear hair down, whatever get it out of your face please 
Let's not even argue about it. I already primed my face with my Elf Honey Primer. I'm gonna use the Jeffree Star Blender on one side of my face and then I'll also use the JS1 on the other side of my face so I can see how they blend out. I haven't used this in a while, so I'm gonna take my 310 and the Maybelline Superstay. I'm gonna apply it on this side using my JS1 Size Queen brush by Jeffree Star. Let's apply, let me get that out of my face. Let's apply the foundation and see how it blends out. I am gonna need more liquid foundation though. I feel like some of it kind of disappeared. Oh God, I don't like this at all. I just feel like I look streaky. So initial thought, I don't like how I look streaky and honestly I feel like I look super patchy. So I'm gonna see if I like it better with the sponge and just, you know, assume that it's just the fact that I can't wrap my mind around using brushes to put my foundation on. I don't like it. Let's try the Beauty Blender. Let's give this a chance. Don't use Morphe Beauty Blenders to be honest and that's just because I feel like they're a little too firm for my liking. Like I don't like to sit there and feel like I, I can hear the ColourPop again. I love this one. I will be using the Jeffree Star sponge, then the smaller version, to see how I like how this one blends out under my eye. So I do like how it blended out my nose contour and under my eyes, so that's, I don't find it necessary to honestly have a smaller beauty blender to, to blend out your nose. I feel like either way, if you didn't have the Jeffree Star Beauty Blender, if you had a regular Real Techniques Blender or whatever, if you're using a brush, I feel like honestly, it wouldn't be necessary to have the Beauty Blender. I feel like you'd use whatever brushes. That, there's no like out there reason why I feel like anybody should spend the money to buy these extra sponges if your sponges work just fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that where it is and not pick that up back again. I'm gonna try to use the JS2 Point Blank Precision brush. I'm gonna try to attempt to use my air spun just with a cap full and just set it real quick. I don't wanna completely douse my eyes in powder as if I was baking with you know my sponges. So I'm just gonna take a little bit on the brush step off just a little bit just to like set it very lightly and I want to see how it just applies if it's going to stick too much or what. I just set my under eyes and my nose just a little bit. I'm going to take my Maybelline Fit Me foundation and I'm going to just set the rest of my face and then we'll continue. contour so we're gonna use the Honic contour brush and we're gonna use our to love you Tante Morphe contour and let's go ahead and start warming up our cheeks so I'm just gonna swivel it in there so I feel like that one does do a really good job applying the contour I put a little too much on my forehead so I'm gonna just use whatever's left on my powder brush we're gonna move on to our eyes let's just try to do a really not so complicated look today. We're gonna use our Friendication Dozen Katie palette. Use this one, this one is basic, and then this one is just a kiss. So we're gonna mix the two together and we're gonna use it for our eyebrow bone. I'm gonna use the JS6 brush, which is the Roll Blender brush. That color either isn't as dark as I thought it was or the brush just didn't keep the light color on because for some reason I thought this color would have showed up a lot brighter than what it looks like on. It kind of looks more pink than anything. I'm gonna use one of my brushes now, my favorite blender brush, because it's a little bit bigger and the other ones seem to be a little bit smaller. I'm gonna use this color in the Desin Katie palette. This one's called Churro, and it's a little bit of a kind of like a cinnamon color just above the crease and blend it out. I don't know if it's this palette or what, but these colors are going on way different than they look in the actual pan, because this one I swear looks almost like charcoal. I'm gonna have to take this Cheens color right here and try to soften it, because this for whatever reason looks extremely dark, and I didn't want it to be that dark. So I'm gonna try to lighten up the edges with that color called Cheens. All right, I'm gonna have to light 
tighten my eyebrow bone too because I don't know what's going on if it's just these colors or whatever but they're not popping like I'm thinking that they're supposed to. So okay, I use my Target highlight underneath my eyebrow bone and it looks a little bit better. I'm gonna take the JS5, which is the crease queen, and I'm gonna use this on the outer portion of my So let's use Cheens, and let's add that to the outer corner, going in a circular motion. Now I'm trying to debate what color I wanna use, which out of the sparkles. So let's swatch them, and we'll see which one looks better. So we'll swatch so we'll swatch all three of these. This one's called Dirty Monkey. This one's A Moment and then this one is Game Over. So I'm gonna swatch all three and see which one I like better that'll go with this look. So let's do the green. I'm gonna apply this with my finger and I'm just gonna press down. I'm gonna add some glitter in the inner corner of my eye. You don't have to do this. This isn't supposed to be part of the look, but I just really like this glitter. I'm gonna use my light glitter. It's white with a little bit of blue in it, but I like this one a lot, but it's mostly white, so. I'm gonna use my Super Fan Smashbox Mascara. I really like this one right now. I haven't really found a mascara that works for me just because my eyelashes don't exist besides this one or the NARS Climax. I'm using chains underneath my eyes, by the way. I'm gonna use this one. My palette is so ugly and I'm so upset. I have like a million eyelashes just stuck together. Now I gotta try to decipher which ones pair together and which ones don't. All right, I found my Ardell's, so I'm gonna apply these and move on with life. All right, what lip gloss do I wanna use? I'm just gonna put on my Dose of Colors Truffle Liquid Lipstick. I'm gonna spray my face with the Hangover 3-in-1 once again. Love it cause it smells like coconut, it keeps my face super hydrated and I don't get super oily using this either. Let's wrap up this video with my thoughts about these brushes. Do I feel like it's 100% necessary to have the kit? No. Is it good for if you want to expand your kit? It is good to have inside your kit. I would say go ahead and spend the money just to have the brushes under your wing. If you're strictly buying it just because you needed new brushes, I wouldn't recommend grabbing these ones first. I honestly would say just get some of your basic essential Morphe brushes. And as far as the Beauty Blender, I'm not going to particularly reach for this one. Don't feel like it's necessary to grab this one, especially if you have a Beauty Blender at home that works perfectly fine. And or if you're using the Real Technique sponges, I honestly don't think it's necessary to go out and purchase the brush set or the Beauty Blender. If I had to pick my favorite brush out of all the brushes, I would say the JS3, which is the Iconic Contour Brush. I honestly was pleasantly surprised about this one because it was so small, but it did help get the contour very, very good. Like as far as blending out, I feel like this one helped a lot better than what I use, which is just like a Sephora brush like this. Just because it's like a little bit more compact in my hand, but this one is way smaller, but I feel like I have way more control to place my contour. As far as price point, I would say go ahead and just get the regular brushes, which are like six or seven dollars a piece. You don't need to buy the $49 piece set. You can take my opinion or not, but that's what it's gonna be. But yeah, so. Thank you guys so much for watching and let me know how you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and also click the bell notifications that way you get notified every time I post a new video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below letting me know how you enjoyed the video or what you'd like to see next. And until next time, stay beautiful queens.